Hello and g'day. Today we're making mini postage stamps and to go with, we have the tiniest little envelopes. And I mean they are mini. These are as mini as you're going to get. That's the smallest one. See if I can get it up a bit closer without going blurry. Look how tiny that little fella is. And I mean, it's really little. See, it fits on this tiny little envelope. It's perfect to use for your tags or to just glue into a page of your junk journal. You'll find a lot of uses for this tiny little envelope. I've made it on this one just using plain white copy paper. And this one here, I've used a seed envelope. Now you'll all be familiar with these seed envelopes because I know I've used them on a project before. So in Australia, we get these from places like Officeworks. I'm not sure where you'll get them overseas, so just shop around for them. This size is 135 by 80 millimeter. If you've got a bigger one, it'll be fine as well. So all I do is I grab these seed envelopes. Get these here for you. I take them apart. So I just slice open the side, lay it flat, and then I cut out my tiny little envelopes. So I get four to a seed packet. And if you're just using copy paper, you can make as many as you like. And if you're using a bigger envelope, as many as will fit on the envelope. But they do look really cool in this color. And it's like the manila color, but it's just a lot more pliable. You wouldn't use cardstock because they'd be too heavy. You need something that's easy to fold and looks really a lot like an envelope when you make it up. So that's that envelope in the seed packet style and that's the envelope in just the white copy paper. So let's get stuck into it and just make one up. I've got two sheets in the printable for my Facebook group. I will have a code a coupon code for you guys so you'll be able to if you're in the Facebook group you'll get access to that coupon code you'll be able to go to my website and get these as a freebie for my YouTube viewers this is available on my website for a low price point okay so we'll start off by opening up the envelope I'm just going to you can either peel that back if you can get it back without ripping it or you can just cut it open by taking the tiniest slither off the side and the tiniest slither off the bottom. That'll open up your envelope. And when you're cutting out, you don't want to get your envelopes on this bulky bit here. So you just want to get it, they do fit, so you just want to get it so that you miss that side bit. Now I've got this available in the FCM cut file for a scanner cut machine, and that's what I use to cut these ones here. So when you lay it on your scanner cut, do it like this, so that when you place your images, these four envelopes, once you've scanned this in, you just place these to miss these two pieces here. And then just go ahead and cut that out. On the instructions, it's pretty simple. You're just folding your side flaps and then your bottom flap. So let's do that first. I'm going to put my ruler on this straight line here. And either using a bone folder or a scraper, just lift that up and crease it. You don't need to use a scoreboard for this because you don't want to rip your little envelope folds because it's not that heavy, this paper. So fold it in 
and crease it down. You'll notice that on the envelope this is a lot higher and pointier and this is a lot lower in the curve. So make the lower part your bottom of your envelope. And again, lift that up and crease it and we're ready to glue that down. So lift that back up and just put a little bit of glue on the side flaps and be careful not to let it spread out into the inside of the envelope and then just fold that back over. Press it down. Your envelope is so close to being done. We just need to fold down the top piece now, line up across the top again, lift up the flap and crease it. Lay it over and just crease it with your fingers. And your envelope is made. So there's our envelope. Let's quickly make another one in just the, the plain white paper. Same again. You can coffee dye this paper. It looks fabulous in a coffee dyed envelope. I've made a few of those in the coffee dyed and you can stamp a pattern all over it. You could distress ink that if you didn't want to tea dye it. You could certainly use colored paper. You could use printed paper, any pattern at all. And get that squared up. So we've got a white one and we've got a manila colored one. All right, now we're ready to make up the stamps. The stamps are really tiny. I've put five sizes in because you might have some envelopes in your stash that are a little bit bigger than these. So you can use these tiny ones for these mini envelopes. I've printed them out on just normal copy paper. What I suggest you do, there's two designs. This one's a little floral and this one's a little kingfisher. I would just make them about an inch wide because I'm going to use my sticky tape dispenser. I've shared this tip before on one of my earlier videos and I used these little teeth to cut out my stamp. So if you've got one of these, they're really beaut. They work really, really well. I don't know, where, how can you see that? So sticky tape dispenser. I'm going to make sure that I know this ruler will fit in between these two bars. So I'm going to rip down this whole piece here, the width of my ruler. And turn it around. So there's my strip, the width of my ruler because I know that's going to fit in there. So I get, I'll use the bigger stamp first. All right. So I'm going to put the bottom of the stamp just below the outline of the stamp. I'm going to crease it and I'm going to rip that off. So it's just ever so slightly given me a little serrated pattern. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the same on the other end and I'm going to keep it the serrated just a little bit away from the printed pattern of the edge of the stamp and I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to pull out my serrated edge just so I've got a little border of white paper around. Then I'm going to turn it around again and hold that down and this time I'm tearing this bit away while I'm holding it with my thumb on this piece here. I'm not pushing my thumb too heavy on the teeth because I don't want to tear my skin. And then I'll turn it around again, find where I want it to cut, hold it, and then I'm tearing this piece here and I'm doing a very bad job of tearing off my little stamp. But 
you get the idea. So we'll go to the next size. Hopefully I'll be cutting this one a little bit straighter. Tear. Turn it around. Tear. Hold it down. If you can manoeuvre it with these fingers, tear the bottom piece. I've been doing these for a while, so I'm getting a bit better at doing it that way. So now I've got my teeny weeny little stamp using the teeth of my sticky tape to tear that down. So now let's go straight to the tiniest one on the bottom. Let's see how I go. What I'm doing this time is I, I am going to come away from the black line and tear it down. Now I've done that because if you get too close to that black line around the edge of the stamp, it doesn't look as good. So just stay away from it a little bit. Bend it over, hold that down and rip. You might need tweezers here. Sometimes the stamp gets stuck in the ridge here, so I use my tweezers to get it out. Bending it over again. I'm holding it with my left hand here and my right hand and I'm tearing it down. I'm going to turn it all the way around. So far so good. And I'm going like that. I'm not coming in too close to the stamp itself. If you get a little bit crooked just pull those bits off and puff, pull it out if it didn't serrate the way you wanted it to. So there it is. If I turn it up the right way, it's, it's a bit hard to tell what it is. And it doesn't really matter that you can't tell what it is as long as it sort of looks like a stamp. And I'll do it on this one as well. Let's get another go at it. Take my time. Tear down. down. I've come in a bit closer this time. Tear down and tear down. Might need my tweezers to get that out. You can come in as close or as far away from it as you want. But it is super cute. Right, so there it is with a wider border and there it is with the more narrow border. You've just got to figure it out for yourself what's going to work best for you. Now I'm just going to get some Distress Ink and I'm going to colour up the edges. I'm just going to backwards and forwards right on the edges. I don't want to colour up the stamp because I think it'll ruin it if, it if I put too much colour. I just want to make the edges stand out a little bit, which they now do. A little bit around the edge here as well. A little bit of glue on the back of the stamp. It's so tiny. I've got this up the right way. Just check and pop that stamp into place. I like the one with the little narrow border the best and that turned out really really good. Right now what I'll do is I'll do the other little flower one very quickly and we'll pop it on this one rip about an inch strip I've placed these on this sheet so that you can actually do this all right I'm going straight to the littlest one actually I might go to this one I'm going to come in and rip Pull out the teeth marks, rip, 
Sometimes it's a bit hard to judge where you are. But does pay to take your time and rip. I've got my cute little floral five cent stamp there to put on that one. Again, I'll just color up the edges ever so slightly. Little dab of glue on that. Make sure it's up the right way. It's so easy to put it up the wrong way, so be careful with that. And that's that done. Depending on your project, whether you like a plain white one or the manila folder one. I'll just clear this up and I'll show you how I put my cancellation stamp on it. Now I've gone through my things and I've found the smallest little postage stamp setup that I've got. It's just a little nothing, you know, you can't even make out what the words are. So I'm just going to put a little bit of ink on the edge of this one and I'm just going to hit and miss there. Same on this one. Just give it a little hit and miss there. You can see that there. And I'll give that a clean off and then I'm going to put some ink on this side of it as well as on my finger and come back over now to this side and just add a tiny bit more just to add a bit more interest on that side without using the full stamp. It just gave me a little bit more text on there without, you know, sort of being too big. It would have been too big if I'd just used the whole stamp. So that's pretty much it. Now, if you want it to be a bit more authentic, I've got a Copic very fine multi-liner marker. You can actually hand write an address on there. If you've got a tiny little stamp of some sort, you can always just stamp that on the front or you can stamp somebody's initials on there and put a bigger stamp. Put something smallish on there, you know, like there's quite a few things that you could do if you don't like your own handwriting, get someone else to do it or use what you've got. Come up with some idea that will work for you. Just something like that. It just sort of finishes it off just that little bit more. I think they're super cute. So I've made some mini stamps that are perfect for these little mini envelopes. I've made some giant stamps that are perfect to go in your junk journal or anywhere else or use as a journaling card. I've also made some blank stamps. These are so cool. If you haven't seen my blank stamps, all they are are just blank stamps that you tear off and you make them into whatever you want. You build them up, layer them up and make them into uh, any style of stamp that you want to put wherever you want. So we have three styles of stamps now. So there's my little stamp series. I've made three videos, mini, large and blanks. I'm Donna. Thanks for watching and bye for now.